Welcome to Theatre Museum Canada Goes Backstage and tonight's panel, The Roots of Native Theatre. For those of you who don't know, I'm Kate Ferris and I'm uh, president of the board of Theatre Museum Canada and I speak for the entire board when I say how happy I am to see you all here for this, our first event at Theatre Pass Marais. I think it's fitting that uh, we should be here for this discussion. Theatre Pass Marais is often referred to as the origin of truly Canadian theatre with the radical intention of creating dis a distinctly Canadian voice almost 40 years ago. And that's true, as long as we're talking about theatre created by, uh, in English by people of European descent. But the fact is, theatre in this country began much, much earlier. Our founding chairman, Herbert Whitaker, once wrote, in any country, no matter how thinly populated, no matter how widely scattered across a continent, people must eventually produce their own theatre as objects on a landscape must produce their own shadows. I've always loved that quote, because uh, not only because it speaks to the inevitability of theater, but also because it's, it feels quintessentially Canadian. You know Herb is referring specifically to Canada's landscape, and the first shadows in this country were produced by our First Nations people. So in a way, we're bringing the two histories together by holding this event at this theater. And now it's time for me to turn things over to our moderator for the evening. Michael was so excited when he called me to say that he had enlisted Jill Carter to, act, Carter to act as our host. Through her work not only as a performer, writer, director, and dramaturge, but also in the academic world at U of T, Jill is highly valued as an instructor and mentor to young Aboriginal students, which puts her in a perfect position to take control of this evening's discussion. So, over to you, Jill. Oh, I Welcome. Um, I'm very, very excited and honored tonight to sit um, at this table with three incredible women, three incredible artists. Um, to my direct left is Alanis King. Alanis is a playwright and she has numerous, numerous credits to her name. Some of her shows include Love Child, Art Show, Heart Dwellers, The Manitoulin Incident, the Tommy Prince story, If Jesus Met Nana Bush, Storyteller, and Step by Step. Um, most recently, last year, for those of you, I see some U of T faces here in the audience, and uh, those of you last year might remember last spring, her play, Gegwa, um, which uh, played at the Robert Gill Theater, and we hope it will play there again this year. Gegwa was written and performed entirely in the Adawa language. Um, it was just an, it's an incredible, uh, revolutionary show, beautifully, beautifully done. And if you get a chance this year, don't miss it if you missed out last year. Um, she is now the playwright in residence at the Center for Indigenous Theater, and she's working again on Be Gegwa, um, um, which will be performed again and toured entirely in the Ojibwe Adawa language. Um, she is also one of her great claims to fame, um, a tour guide, the tour guide extraordinaire for the great Indian bus tour um, out of the Native Canadian Friendship Centre. And if you haven't had the opportunity to take that particular little ride, you must, if you live in this city, you must do it. Make a note, one of the things to do before you die. <laughs> um, in the center here is Monique Mohika. Monique is an actor and a published playwright. She is uh, the author of um, Princess Pocahontas and the Blue Spots, Bird Women and the Suffragettes. Um, she is the former artistic director of Native Earth, uh, former artistic director of Center for Indigenous Theatre a co-founder of Turtle Cow's Performance Ensemble and co-editor of Staging Coyote's Dream, an anthology of First Nations drama in English. Volume one um, came out several years ago and volume two is on its way. Yvette Nolan, here at the end, is a playwright and dramaturge and director. Her plays include Annie May's Movement, Blade, Job's Wife, Freeman's Wake, Faithless, and Finish Line, and the libretto, Hilda Blake, as well as the radio play, Owen. 
Yvette is the artistic director of Native Earth Performing Arts today. And um, I'm just going to start now with, uh, with the first of um, several questions that we've prepared um, for the artists here. The first question is, how did you get involved in theater? And along, you know, um, uh, and partnered with that, um, would you care to discuss some of your role models, your inspirators, who has inspired you, and also your earliest training? <laughs> Dominique. Oh, okay. <laughs> no pressure, right? Um, I, I was born into a theater family, and Muriel's here in the front row. Theater family, the, she's the director of Spider Woman Theater, the oldest continuous women's theater in North America and probably the world, right? right? Longest continuous thing going since 1975. So our family performed as show Indians before I was born. So there was a lot of um, inventiveness there, she said. They, they made stuff up. <laughs> and the that performing was part that I didn't take part in personally, but certainly informed what was around and informed what the family did. There was a lot of acting out and a lot of stories, always, in my grandmother's house. My grandmother's sister, my Aunt Lizzie, if she told a story, she got up and she she moved it, she acted it out, she talked it, she sang, she danced it. And my mom, when I was very young, and we lived in New York City, was determined that I was gonna get every single bursary or scholarship available for a non-white kid that she could talk them into. So from age three, I was at uh, Henry Street Settlement House in New York City doing primarily dance with really interesting folks like Edith Steffens and Murray Lewis. And at that time, Muriel was with Thel and Nikolai Company, who was part of Henry Street. So I used to go watch those rehearsals as I had also during that time went with my mother to her voice lessons and sat under the piano and was taken to Central Park to see Shakespeare. And that's one of my earliest memories of, of performance is um, watching James Earl Jones do Shakespeare in Central Park. And being taken to a lot of performance. The, well, I remember around the corner from where we lived, there was um, a little theater called the Paperback Play, Paper Bag Players. And they did, that's when I really noticed, oh, this is magical. I remember they did kind of a, a swan lake. It wasn't really ballet, it was more, I think it was puppets. But it was the way that things came out of each other, came out of each other, came out of each other, and the red curtain and the red seats. And I was always taken to the Nutcracker every year. So those were my earliest and very, very sort of